led me into, I mean, you want to ask that over and I'll try not to look at you? It's just yeah. distracting. Yeah. Try not to look at a camera, look at me, and you're good. Try you're not good. to look at a camera? Yeah, don't look at Oh, camera. I thought you said, no, you're look don't look at you. At no, look directly oh. at me. <laughs> I was doing the opposite. I was looking at the camera. All right. <coughs> we are ready. Okay, let's do it. So, at what point in your life were you considered hooked on this style of extreme music? Um, I mean, and I don't want to say how old I am, but uh, I've been around for a while. In the 70s, man, the late 70s. But even before that, I guess, because I had two older brothers, and they were into Kiss and Alice. I mean, I was into Kiss, but they turned me on to Alice Cooper, uh, you know, the Stones, the Beatles, all that stuff. So Elton John, even early stuff. The Who, though, was like one of my favorites. Alice Cooper and The Who. So that's uh, that's probably when. But like being a Kiss fan, it was, that was the band that I found myself. You know, my brothers didn't care for it. They were older already. From like buying magazines with Kiss in them, you know, I would see like this little thing about the Sex Pistols or the Clash or Ramones, you know. So I started buying all those magazines and then started buying all those albums because I was like, this is looks fucking crazy, you know. And I just fell in love with that type of music, you know. And of course, I like metal and you know too, but that stuff is like you know it, in my soul. Alice Cooper, man. Theatrics live, man, with the with the freaking axe that comes down on the yeah, like that is insane. I've never seen a band do that other than like Guar. And well, I've yeah, never, I've never seen Guar live. Oh, they're, they're <laughs> I think you'll like them. I'm, I'm in <laughs> they're for, very entertaining. I'm in yeah. for a treat, but I've been told. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, what excites you about the evolution of extreme music as a whole, like right now? I mean. There's so many subgenres, and right. in general, this this genre is just blowing up. That's what I was gonna say. Is that uh, I lo I love the I don't like. There's not a lot of newer bands I like. You know, I mean there is, but the, the main stuff I listen to is old, probably. But um, I just like how it's evolving. You know, <clears throat> it's evolving it, like mad. It's it's just insane. You know, so many different, like you said, so many subgenres and. It just, it's, there's, you know, like techno country or something. Just, I listen to a lot of different stuff, not just, you know, I really don't even listen to this style of music that we play, you know. I've been told that a lot. Like, a lot yeah. of metal musicians are like, I don't even listen to metal. Like, like, yeah, I mean, I don't really at all, you know. I mean, I like Old Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, but I don't really listen to it that much, you know. I listen to it. I like discovering new bands, but not, they're not always great, you know, but, and then I always, even if I like a newer band, I go back to find something old, you know, but, um, yeah, that's about it, man. I like the way it's evolving, and, and there's always something new every couple of weeks, like a new genre or something weird mixed together that, that's interesting, you know. So what have you learned the most about the community or culture over the years? I'm talking, just the people that listen to your music, they go and watch you on tour. Yeah. I mean, like, what, what do you think they all have in common? It's, they're mostly cool people, you know? It's kind of like a family, really, you know? Like you meet somebody who's either been writing you on Instagram or something, and <laughs> such as yourself, but uh, you know, everybody's just really supportive and cool. You know, that's, uh, I mean, I had a GoFundMe years ago, well, a couple years ago, because uh, I had a liver transplant, and the people just supported the fuck out of me. It was just, you know, pretty overwhelming to see that type of thing, you know. Do you think if you weren't in a metal band, that, would, that wouldn't have ever happened? Well, people probably wouldn't have known who I am, I guess, you know, from touring and records and stuff, so... So how has this style of music made a significant positive impact on the world today? Oh man, that's a hard one. Uh, I mean, it keeps me busy, you know? I mean, I play in a band and it, it's, uh, it keeps me out of trouble as well. Sometimes, not all the time. But um, yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's all positive. I mean, we're, we're a negative, people think we're just super negative, but we really just like to have fun and, and goof around, you know? But so that's a positive thing you know 
And I meet a lot of people and I like that, you know? It's fun. I hear that. I was talking to Immolation. He's like, he said the same exact thing, how like, their music is really looked at negative because, I mean, their imagery, their lyrics. And yeah. And well, most of the stuff is, yeah, you know I mean? In general, death metal and extreme metal sludge, it's very negative. That's what the general public thinks, so I guess, exactly. you know. But we all, everybody that's into this stuff understands that it's just, you know, it's it's for shock value, some of it, and, some, you know, guar, for instance, you know. So, I mean, I think it's just a very positive thing in itself, you know. So, do you have any, like, road stories, maybe? Maybe <laughs> on this tour, something maybe crazy has, has happened, and you're like, holy shit, I'm still doing this today. Oh, all the time. <laughs> There's Jimmy Bauer. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I always think that. I'm always like, uh, I mean, we've been together 30 years. I've been knowing him longer than that, you know, so. Yeah, I always think, wow, like we're still doing this thing and it's still drawing like younger people and every time we tour there's n new younger people that come to the shows. Like somebody will bring their son or their daughter that's a fan and then they bring their kid next time. I'm like, man, this is crazy. It's like you can't kill us because we're like bacteria, you know, or... I've said that in a million interviews, but you know, it's the same thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's perfect. That's a great answer. Um, so I got a few more. All right. Um, that's a good one. So with all your experience, man, uh, <laughs> what's some advice you could give to somebody that wants to do what you've done and accomplish? over the years, but has no idea, no talent, except. <laughs> well, with no talent, I guess. I mean, you can still do a band. That's what punk rock was all about in the beginning. And I guess it still is, too. There's still bands coming out that only know three chords. You know, you don't even have to know three chords. You can know, like, one chord and start a band of some type, you know? Um, advice, I don't, you just gotta stick with it. Even at times when you people hate you, and think that, you know, they, or you think you should break up or something because people are just fucking hating you, which has happened to us many times, but uh, um, you just gotta stick to it, man. Whatever you do, you have to believe in uh, the whole thing, you know, and be willing to put in some work and get on the road and sleep on people's floors and eat trash food and stuff, you know? We try to get smarter every time we tour. We try, you know, but we'll, we still end up screwing up somehow, but. <laughs> He's still making it around the globe. I mean, we'd get a hotel room and have five people in one room. We have to sneak them in the back of the hotel, you know, because we couldn't afford anything else. And that was a luxury. So mostly sleeping on people's nasty floors and stuff like that, you know. So, well, it is awesome because after you've done all that and you actually get a little popularity, you know, it's just, it's easier, you know, so. I, it is, yeah, yeah. So, thinking back, and maybe even right now, um, what do you think is the most rewarding part about doing things DIY? I'm talking about like tours, uh, flyers, albums. The most what about it? The most rewarding. Rewarding. Uh, well, I mean, we work with labels and stuff, you know. We, we used to, we've gotten screwed over by labels too, as well. But um, now we license our stuff to a, a bigger label. But we mostly do, you know, do the shirts. We just have a friend print them. You know, we make our own flyers and stuff sometimes for, for social media. And it used to be actual flyers, you know. You have to steal one of those counters from Kinko's and just go and use it all the time. Um, I guess that's all, you know, part of it. It just feels good to do stuff yourself, you know? Uh, last one is... Um... <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Where were you as a person before you were in a band? Where do you think you are now? I don't know where I'm at now. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I'm in Buffalo, but I don't know. Um, before I, I've been playing music since I was like 14. I was a singer of a band called uh, Teenage Waste when I was 14. 
And so I've been, I've been in bands. There's been periods where I wasn't in a band, so I don't know. I think I'm the same person as I was then. I mean, I try to learn. You know, like I said, we try to eat better on the road, stuff like that, you know. But so that's the, really the only like kind of. I don't know. Those aren't really like deep things, but I think I'm pretty much the same person, man. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Because some people, 